Good morning, church. We are really excited that you're here this morning. Thank you for joining us. And uh, if you are visiting with us today, please sign our guest book back in the Northex, and one of our ushers will be more than happy to welcome, give you a welcome bag, so and answer any questions that you have. So we also welcome all of you that are joining us on Facebook here this morning. Uh, we're asking everyone, or if you would be willing to put a name tag on for us this morning to help pass her out and the visitors that get to know us. Uh, you can find them back in the entrance there or over on the, uh, the table in the narthex. So, we really need to do that. So, we have a really exciting day today. Here today, we have uh, we're so blessed to have Pastor Scott Strokerch with us here this morning. Uh, the call committee has had a couple meetings with Pastor. Uh, he's accepted to come up and do the interim pastor here for us. Um, and so, we are so excited he's here. Uh, got the Duluth here on Wednesday afternoon. We got him moved in, settled in. Uh, he's got the parsonage looking nice over there and got all his books in his office and uh, he's, he's been a busy guy already. So, uh, Pastor's done a little bio for us about himself and that's in uh, December Messenger. If you haven't had a chance to read that yet, uh, Pastor did a nice job there. So, i uh, also like to invite all the men here to our Band of Brothers men's group. We meet Wednesday morning at Caribou Coffee over by Cub Foods there. Uh, 7 o'clock, all men of the church are invited to join us for uh, devotion and fellowship time. Also exciting this week, we've got the spritz cookie making going on Tuesday, December 5th, and again on Wednesday, December 6th. So we're hoping in two days we can uh, get all those cookies knocked out, and uh, we're excited for, uh, for that time. So there's volunteer sign-up sheets down in the fellowship hall. Uh, any cookies that are placed on the list now will go on a waiting list, but uh, we're going to do our best to get enough cookies made for everybody. And we've got supplies in the fridge. I think we're all set to go, eh, Glenn? So... Yep, got a good nod out of Gwen, so I think we're ready. So, And uh, Wednesday evening we'll be having our Advent services. They will start at 6.30. They will be upstairs in the church uh, sanctuary here. Pastor Scott will be uh, leading us in that. And uh, Esther Circle will be meeting this Thursday morning, December 7th at 10 o'clock in Fellowship Hall. All women of the church are welcome to join them in fellowship, Bible study, and their business meeting. As a side note, uh, their meeting time may be just a little bit if the cookies uh, do have a tendency to go into Thursday, but uh, we'll know more there on, on Wednesday on that, so we'll keep you informed. Uh, we're very uh, thankful for the Esther Circle and those that came on uh, last Thursday to get the church ready for Advent and Christmas time. Got the tree up and wreaths up, and it uh, looks really awesome in here. Thank you, everybody. And then uh, also the Esther Circle is sponsoring their hat and mitten drive for the students at Piedmont School. We are accepting homemade and purchased items. Uh, please place those items in the Narthex by or under the tree over there, if you would. Uh, we will bring what items we have over to school before Christmas, uh, but, but still we'll be accepting items after Christmas to, to give out to the students there as long as they need them in the spring. So um, we will be having our installation of the 2024 church council during our church service on December 31st. And uh, this morning, we will not be doing the Chosen DVD Bible study this morning. Uh, we'll be doing cake and coffee and uh, have fellowship time to uh, meet and greet Pastor Scott here this morning. So I uh, need volunteers to bring treats on Sunday mornings. Uh, those that you have signed up, uh, thank you. If you have any questions, please ask a member of the Esther Circle uh, if you can sign up on that sheet. So the VFW will be holding the Pearl Harbor Day Memorial Service at the deck on Thursday. December 7th at 11 o'clock in the Pioneer Hall at the deck. Uh, Chuck's Barbershop Quartet will be uh, singing at this event, and the public is invited to that. So, uh, Any other announcements here this morning that I can help with? So, if hearing none, we would... Uh, yes? Oh, Pastor. Uh, Mike Swing was doing today for communion to celebrate on St. Patrick's. Is that actually like that? Uh, like that? Well, Okay. Um, what we're going to do this morning is 
Communion at the Rail. For those of you who have a difficult time coming up and would rather just stay and get it at, in your pew, I'm going to, it'll work like this. When I uh, turn around and say, the peace of the Lord be with you always, I'll commune myself, and I'll commune the assistants and the, and the music people, and then I'll come and get you before I get everybody else. That way when I'm, because I, I understand I'm going to be locked up here a little bit. <laughs> that way, though, I can then, when everybody's done, just turn around and finish putting things away to finish up the service. Does everybody understand what's going on then? Do I make myself clear is what I used to have to say to my kids? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That way I put it on me and not on them. All right. I just wanted to make sure we were all on, the, on that page. So um, if you're going to stay down here, raise your hand so that I can come to you and, and give you communion at that time. All right? Thank you. This is technology. Mark's going to run upstairs and see if we can make an adjustment here. So sorry about the delay, folks. Sorry, Pastor, about that. And I should have checked that this morning for you. So, so as Pastor explained uh, on the communion there that you'll be excused and we'll be starting in the middle here and, and then going out from the outside and be excused from there. So, so please prepare your hearts and minds as we begin our first Advent service. So Mike, let's start us off, please. So Advent is a special focus on Christ's arrival or coming, but Christ's coming manifests itself among us in three ways, past, present, and future. The reading, readings which highlight Christ's coming in the past focus on Old Testament prophecy of his incarnation at Bethlehem. The readings which highlight Christ's coming in the future focus on his second coming on the last days at the end of time. And the readings which highlight Christ's coming in the present focus on his ministry among us by the means of the Holy Spirit through word and sacrament today. The tradition, traditional use of the Advent candles placed on the wreath originated in East Germany, even prior to the Reformation. As this tr tradition came down to us by the beginning of this century, it involved three purple candles and one pink candle. The purple candles matched the purple or royal blue pyramids on the altar purple for the royalty of the coming king. The pink candle was the third candle to be lit, not the fourth on Got It Sunday, the third Sunday of Advent. Got It means rejoice in Latin, which is taken from Philippians 4.4. Rejoice, the Lord is near. Hence, the pink candle was used to signify rejoice. Also included is a white candle, Christ candle, in the middle of to be lit during the 12 days of Christmas from December 25th to January 5th. The Advent wreath is a Christian tradition that symbolizes the passage of the four weeks of Advent. It is a circular candle holder that typically holds five candles. During the season of Advent, one candle on the wreath is lit each Sunday until all the candles, including the fifth candle, are lit on Christmas Day. Each candle represents an aspect of the spiritual preparation or the celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most Advent wreaths use three colors of candle, purple, pink, white. However, some may use blue in place of the purple. The first candle, purple or blue for us, the prophecy candle or candle of hope. We can have hope because of God is faithful and will keep the promise made to us. Our hope comes from God. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up one who will raise to the rule over the nation. The Gentiles will hope in him. And may the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pastor, it's yours. <laughs> Okay, is it working? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. So, uh, all right, that's what I want to.
gather for worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would stir up our hearts as we prepare ourselves for your coming again, as well as for the preparation that we are about to put in place for your first coming at Christmas. Be with us all as we get this preparation underway. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. We'll sing our opening hymn, number 244, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, and verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known. 
to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. And behold, you're angry and we sinned. In our sins, we have been a long time and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean and all righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name who rouses himself to take hold of you. For, your, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our father. And we are the clay. You are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please, look, we are all your people. Here ends the reading. Our gradual this morning is from Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7, and we will read this responsively. So the bold print is your response, and I'll read the lighter print. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Would you please join me in singing Our Glory Be to the Father, found on page 813 of your blue hymn book. As we prepare for the New Testament reading. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Our New Testament reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please stand as you are able as we prepare our hearts and minds for the gospel lesson, as we sing, open our eyes, found on page 633 of the Blue Hymnal. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the heaven, and the powers in the heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see those things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to you. How interesting that the very first words of our epistle reading this morning are the very way that most pastors greet you with the sermon. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a saying that, quite honestly, I don't know how far back it goes, but it goes like this. If you snooze, you lose. If you're found sleeping at the wrong time, you might lose out on a great opportunity. Or if your boss catches you sleeping on the job, you might get suspended or worse, fired. Especially if it happens often enough. But, now it doesn't always mean literal sleep, mind you. Uh, it, it could mean that you are just not paying attention. When you should be, anyway. I'm, I'm sure we've all missed opportunities that we wish we'd given more attention to uh, with our surroundings. Our gospel text in Mark 13 finds Jesus talking to his disciples about this very thing concerning his return on the last day. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will be falling from the heaven. And the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Sounds ominous, doesn't it? The tribulation that Jesus is speaking of here is called the abomination of desolation. Or what happens because of that abomination. The abomination he's speaking of here is the devil. The Antichrist. He says in the text just prior to where our gospel text begins today... He says, when you see the abomination of desolation standing where he ought not to be, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let the one who is on the housetop not go down nor enter his house to take anything out. And let the one who is in the field not turn back to take his cloak. And alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, pray that it may not happen in winter. For in those days... There will be such tribulation as has not been found from the beginning of the creation that God created until now and never will be. And if the Lord had not cut short the days, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect whom he has chose, he shortened the days. And then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, there he is, don't believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform signs and wonders to lead astray even 
the elect, if it were possible. Be on guard. I have told you all these things beforehand. So it's after that tribulation. The abomination of desolation takes place. And Jesus tells his disciples and us that the light that we as human beings have enjoyed over all time since the creation will not give out light. The sun will be darkened, the moon will not give light, the stars falling from the heavens and the heavens shaken. This is a major occurrence in the universe. When we get to this point, evil and sin will have peaked and the world will be dying. It will be a violent death and even shakes the heavens above. Remember, Jesus is not talking to the crowds here, but to his disciples, the future leaders of his church. He follows a stark description of the world in the throngs of its evil destruction with the final sign, and they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elects from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Friends in Christ, this is what we confess in our creeds, both apostles and Nicene every week. In Acts 1, where Jesus ascends to heaven in the clouds 40 days after the resurrection, his disciples are watching him ascend upward in the cloud, straining their necks as they watch. And then two white men in robes appear and say, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go up. Think about this for a second. Jesus is describing these events in Mark 13 before his death and resurrection. He's not yet gone to the cross. As he tells his disciples how he's going to return. They are hearing about his return before they see him leave. It will be another 10 days after that ascension when the Holy Spirit is poured out on believers. So how long do you think it will take them to solve this little equation? When Jesus returns, it won't just be the servants of the Master, but everyone on earth. I mean, think about it. The world's around. How are we going to see something that's happening halfway across the world all at the same time? It just boggles the mind how this could be. The same way that he left the disciples when he ascended 40 days after his death and resurrection from the sins of the world, his ascension, power, and glory will now be witnessed by the whole world to see. And for many of them, and that means including some of you, it will be too late to do anything about it. Those who choose not to listen are those who are snoozing when the church was proclaiming the gospel to them. Many have chosen to ignore it or just simply don't believe it. Instead, they heard the cry of what they thought was pure science, telling them that the world's beginning was about a big bang. And then when things cooled down enough, two amoeba found each other in the primordial ooze. And life began to evolve into the mess it is now. They refused to believe anything they can't see, hear, or touch. If you remember, Jesus had a disciple like that. Thomas, who was late returning after Jesus' death to the upper room. It was a couple days late. When he got there, the disciples said, Thomas, you wouldn't believe what happened. We were up in the room the other night, and Jesus appeared in the middle of the room. He didn't walk through any doors or come in the window. He just appeared. And he reassured us that he had been resurrected. Thomas says, Ah, oh, my goodness. I won't believe until I see the holes in his hands and in his side, in his feet. So Jesus, you think, well, why should I tell him why? He doesn't believe anyway. But Jesus comes back anyway, eight days after the first time, same room, same locked doors and windows. 
appears and says the same greeting he gave the first group, peace be with you. And then he turns to Thomas and says, touch the holes in my hands, stick your hand in my side. Don't disbelieve, but believe. Thomas got down on his knees before Jesus and he said, my Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Thomas repented. There are many who won't. After this description of Jesus about the light of the world being snuffed out, he tells them that these signs will be, that seeing these signs will be similar to that of seeing a fig tree as it nears summer. Its branches become tender and it puts out leaves. In the same way that you see these signs and recognize summer is coming, you're going to see these signs of the end coming as well. And you're going to know what it means. He says, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Surely many generations have come and gone since Christ ascended to heaven. But the generation who is going to experience that specific tribulation, just, just as we know when the seasons are about to change, we're going to see that those signs and know that they're coming. That generation will not pass away until these signs have passed. And they will be, the time of heaven will be at the very gates. It's hard to believe anyone would miss such bold signs of the end as, such as those. Jesus has described for us this morning, and if you did, it would mean that you have been snoozing for way too long. Wake up. Stay alert. Signs of the church prepare us for what's to come. A healthy church is grounded in God's word as true and infallible. We recognize no mistakes in God's word. I know some will say, yeah, but it was written by men. Written by men, but inspired by the Holy Spirit. All, all teaching is God breathed and is useful in teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness. That's 2 uh, Timothy 3.16. These signs prepare us for what's to come. The healthy church, like I said, is grounded in God's word is true and infallible. His sacrament of baptism makes you his child. <clears throat> the sacrament of the altar, a.k.a. the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion, are administered to the members as a foretaste of the feast to come. What a great feast it's going to be. Every kind of food you can imagine but we get a little small foretaste of it here. As you receive his body given for you, his blood shed for you to forgive you your sins. Unfortunately, there are some tares among the wheat, and on that last day, they will be separated, and the chaff will be burned. In the last section of our text, Jesus gives us warning that we will not know the day or the hour. No one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. He then gives us what seems like a familiar parable. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Jesus calls them servants, but he mentions the gatekeeper specifically. We don't really know who the gatekeeper is, or because he's not named only in the, only his vocation. In Jesus' parable of the wise and foolish virgins, the gatekeeper cries out the arrival of the bridegroom. Many jokes that we've told over the years about somebody going to heaven and St. Peter being there and greeting at the pearly gates. I often wonder why that is, because they don't mention the gatekeeper, but I think it's because Peter is named the one who Jesus gives the keys 
of the gates of heaven. But those keys are about the forgiveness of sins, about confession and absolution, and who has the ability to grant such forgiveness. I can't say whether that makes Peter the gatekeeper or if it's someone else, but he is for sure one of Christ's servants. His servants called and ordained are here to prepare you for that day. God is preparing you through them as they proclaim Christ to you. And feed you his body and his blood as you study his word and Bible study and in your devotions that you do daily. They keep us steadfast in our faith in our mission to bring God's word to the nations that all may hear and be baptized in the name of the Father, Most High God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let us continue as a congregation devoted to Christ as he prepares us for that day in which Christ in our gospel is speaking. We know not the day or the hour of his arrival, but we are assured of his promises. But the generation to endure that time will not pass away until the tribulation has passed. Remember, Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. If we're blessed to be living at that moment, we will see Christ coming in the clouds as he comes to take his faithful bride to church, home, to the place prepared for you and for me in his Father's kingdom. First, those who have fallen asleep in him will rise from their graves, followed by those who are still living. Paul writes in our epistle that we must put our faith in Christ Jesus, who will sustain us to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of Jesus Christ our Lord. So, be prepared and alert. Don't be snoozing and losing. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding of your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Please rise if you are able. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed printed in your bulletin on page 8. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, sustain your saints to the end as we enter another church year. Encourage the preachers of your word and all who hear that the testimony about Christ may be confirmed among us as we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, give boldness and faithfulness to carry, to carry our presiding pastor, Reverend Joe Marsh, our re regional pastor, and all pastors in Christ. Renew the faith and quicken the love of all Christians that we may be enriched in all speech and knowledge. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant your blessing to all marriages and keep all husbands and wives faithful to each other. Guide them as they care for the children entrusted to them. Bestow your loving care upon all children who have suffered abuse or neglect, as well as upon all who open their homes to children in foster care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, behold our nation and its leaders and protect our armed forces, taking them under your care and blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Visit us in your compassion, O Lord. Deliver the sick from their infirmity, the troubled from their afflictions, the grieving from, all their, from their sorrow, and the dying from all their fear, especially those that we name in our hearts at this time. May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Lord, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, enter Jerusalem to shouts and cheers of joy. Grant that we may be stirred by the word and sacraments to rejoice anew, now and in the second advent. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Father, you have made us glad to enter into your presence to hear the good news of our Savior and receive your gifts. Preserve, O church, your church against all her enemies, and lead us to walk in your ways and to follow your paths, that when Jesus returns in his glory, we may welcome him with glad hosannas. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. seated while we prepare for the
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts you've given us, and we ask you now to receive these gifts to further the mission of your church, to reach out to all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue our worship on page 9 with the service of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lord. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, I sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Get graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us to you alone, O Father, be our glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this sight. Okay. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave, broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had supped, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. Drink this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I'm sorry, I, I skipped ahead a page, my bad. Got, the page got stuck. As often as we eat this bread, drink this cup, and proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen, come Lord Jesus. All right. Let us pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. Christ's body given for you. 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 Thank you. 
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you with body and soul to life everlasting. Number 462, come share the Lord. to the Lord's table.
Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul, life everlasting. Depart in his peace.
pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Stand if you are able. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Seated. We have a closing hymn. Closing hymn. This is one I picked out, by the way. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for your grace. <laughs> uh, my page is stuck together, and all of a sudden, reading the end of everything, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, there's something missing here. So, uh, my apologies for that, but uh, I, I gotta admit, I must, be, must have been a little bit more nervous than I let on. So, that's probably why that. I am glad to be here. It's been quite a, a journey coming up from Fort Wayne Took it in two trips. Fortunately, my mother lives in the Twin Cities, so I was able to stay with her for one night before making my way up here on Wednesday. And it was such a great sight to see so many there to help get me unpacked. And, and then uh, I spent the rest of the night pretty much putting my clothes away. And the next day I came over here and put my books away and uh, just and then kind of spruced my sermon up a little bit for you all as well. I look forward to talking with some of you downstairs or more of you downstairs, getting to know you a little bit. If you haven't put a name tag on, please put one on so I get to know you. Because <laughs> otherwise, you know, I, I'm all right with names. Once I get to put a face and a name together, I'm usually pretty good. But for a little bit yet, I, I'd appreciate it if you could put the name tag on. May the good Lord bless you and keep you this week. <laughs> Yeah, I get that.